Hey guys, welcome to math lesson, um, module six, lesson four. All right, so jumping right in, we see this sentence here. It says one meter equals blank centimeter. Now this is something that we did a long time ago. Um, so I'll give you about three seconds to think about this, but one meter equals how many centimeters? So one meter equals 100 centimeters which means you need 100 tiny centimeters to equal the same length as one meter, okay? So we can also write this as one centimeter then. If one meter equals 100 centimeters, then one centimeter equals one out of 100 meters. We need 100 centimeters to equal one meter, so only having one centimeter means this is what it's equal to, one out of 100 meters. So in our lessons from last week, we started learning about decimals and how to write numbers as decimals. So if I, or how to write fractions, I'm sorry, as decimals. So if I have one over 100 or one out of 100, and I wanted to write that as a decimal, I would write it as zero point, or my decimal, zero, one. Now, some of you are probably thinking, um, why do I have a zero here? Um, what's going on? So let's talk about it. Last week, we talked about how when we have our decimal, to the left of my decimal is my ones place, and how to the right of my decimal is my tenths place. So here, we have T-E-N-T-H, and it's important that you realize that it has the T-H and not just a regular 10, because that makes a huge difference, okay? So this is my 10th place, and so this right here to the right of my 10th place, hold on one second, oops. To the right of my tenth place is my hundredths place. Now, it might sound a little funny the way I'm saying it. It's because I'm saying hundred, but with a th at the end. So hundredths place. Okay? So let's think about this in a tape diagram. Let's say I had a tape diagram and I said one meter or M equals 100 centimeters. Now I could definitely draw a hundred little lines here and make and show you that there are a hundred centimeters in one meter, but that would take me forever. So instead, I'm going to separate this tape diagram into 10 equal places. Instead of doing um, 100, I'm just going to separate it into 10. All right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, the reason I separate it into 10 is because I can skip count by 10 to get to 100. And it's definitely easier than doing one, two, three, all the way to 100. So instead I could say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So this part right here is one out of 10, right? It's one out of 10 pieces, and we know that that's equal to 10 centimeters. Because again, we're skip counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 centimeters. So each of these bigger blocks are worth 10 centimeters, right? And then overall, the fraction is one out of 10. So the one out of 10 is the meter, right? Because this entire thing, this entire tape diagram in the teal color, 
that entire length is worth one meter. Now this box right here is one tenth of that meter and it's equal to 10 centimeters. Now, if I wanted to show one one hundredth though, I couldn't just shade in this one piece because I know that this one piece is actually one tenth. So instead I'm going to take this one tenth and inside just that box, I'm going to separate it into 10 equal pieces. So, my pieces are real tiny. All right, so it's hard to see. I'll try to zoom in. But I separated my one tenth into 10 equal pieces. Now, I would then shade in one of those tiny pieces so that I would show one out of 100 meters. Now, again, let's keep in mind. So if I was gonna draw 100 centimeters, I was gonna draw a line for each of those 100 centimeters, I would have a lot of tiny lines. But instead, I'm going to break it into 10 so you can see like, oh, this is 10, this is 10, this is 10, this is 10. So if I had all 10 of these shaded and all 10 of these and all 10 in each one, I would have 100. But if I only want to show one out of the 100, I can keep these 10 just like that because I know that they're worth 10 and only shade in one of the tiny pieces. I would only have to break one part into hundreds, okay? So I'm showing that one, out of 100 meters is equal to one centimeter, which is the exact same thing that we said up here, okay? So we're gonna keep that in mind. Now, I wanna go back to talking about place value, okay? So let's say I have the number, One hundred twenty five point zero two. Let's say that is my number. The way that I would first know what I'm doing is take a look at each place value. So the decimal point is here, right? So to the left of my decimal place is always going to be my ones place. So here are my ones. Now we've done place value multiple times. So I have my ones, after my ones, I would have my tens, and after my tens, I would have my hundreds. So if this decimal point was never here, I would say this number is 125, right? But we have a decimal here, which means this number is not just 125. So to the left of my decimal point is always my ones place, well, to the right of my decimal point is always my tenths place. And again, notice that I'm saying TH. So this is the TEN place. This is the TENTH place. So this is my tenths place. And then to the right of that would be my hundreds place. Again, with the TH. So any anything that's gonna to be to the right of the decimal point, they're always gonna end in a TH. And that's how you know that it's going to be to the right of the decimal point and not you know, in one of these places, okay? So we have hundreds, tens, ones, tenths, and then hundredths, right? So the way that I read this number is, I read anything to the left of the decimal as a whole number, and then I can read anything to the right of the decimal as a fraction. Okay, so this would be 125 holes, and then I'm left with this fraction. Now, this is a two in my hundredths place, so my fraction is two hundredths. So if I was reading this um, decimal number as a fraction, I would say 125 and two hundredths. That's how I would read that number, okay? Because there's a two in the hundredths place. So anything that's gonna go to the right of the decimal is gonna turn into a fraction. So let's do another one. Let's say I had um, Okay, 
let's say my new number is 248.08. Well, again, anything to the left of the decimal, I'm going to read as a whole number. So that means I have 248. And anything to the right is going to be a fraction. So I have an 8 in my hundredths place. So this becomes 248 and 8 hundredths. Okay, so these are pretty simple because there's a zero in my tens. So I only have to worry about the eight and then put it over a hundred because it's in the hundreds place, right? But sometimes this number will not be a zero. So let's say it's, now we have a two there. Right? So now we're trying to figure out, well, what is my number? Well, again, anything to the left is a whole number. So I would say 476. And now to the right. Now in this case, now I have a two in my tens place and four in my hundreds place. So if that's two separate fractions, that would be two tens. And then four hundreds. Hmm. Two tenths and four hundreds. What could I do? What could I do? Well, I know that we were talking about a tape diagram earlier. All right, so let's do this tape diagram, right? So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because last time I made it too small and then I couldn't see my tinier lines. Okay. So now I'm gonna separate it into 10 equal pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's just extend this over here. Okay, I have 10 pieces, right? So I know that all 10 of them together are gonna give me my one whole, right? So we have two tons. So I could shade in one. Two. So here's my two tenths. Now I have to now show four hundredths, right? So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Each of these is worth 10. So I would have to break down this one into 10 equal pieces to show my hundredth side, right? So let me do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one more is 10. Okay, so now I have 10 equal pieces. So this is going to represent my hundreds, right? Because if I did this for every box then they would be worth the size of a one one hundredth, right? So now I'm gonna shade in four of these pieces. One, two, three, and four. So notice that the whole thing is not shaded, just four of those. So now I have four over a hundred. Well, let's think, there would be 10 in here and 10 in here, so 10, 20. So two tenths is really equal to 20 out of 100. So we have 20, 10, 20 hundredths plus my four hundredths, right? We can add those together. That's gonna equal, so 20 hundredths plus four hundredths is gonna equal 24 hundredths, okay? 
So going back to up here, when we were trying to write that um, number as a fraction, we would say anything to the left of the decimal is our whole number, so 476, which we have, and then anything to the right is going to be written as a fraction. So I would say 24 hundredths. Now looking at that, that's easy to spot out, right? We have a 24 right there, and we just got to know over what number should we put it as a fraction. So because we're talking about the hundredths place, that is the place value that is there, and that would be bigger than tenths, we couldn't say 24 tenths, um, we would say 24 hundredths. And that's because you have a two in the tenth place, which would equal 20 hundredths, and then four in the hundredths place. So 20 hundredths plus four hundredths equals 24 hundredths. So again, that's written here. So let's do one more. Let's say we have mm. All right. Let's say this is my number. Okay, again, to the left of my decimal is my whole number. So my whole number would be 146 holes. Now we're gonna look to the right of my decimal and make that a fraction. So I could easily look at this and say, hmm, a three in my tenths, that means three tenths and a eight in my hundredths, that means eight hundredths, and add those together. But again, because they don't have the same denominator, I can't easily add. So I know though, right, if I go back to my tape diagram, if I go back to this, I know that I'm gonna have 10 equal pieces. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten equal pieces. Each piece is worth ten. So if I'm shading in three tens, that means I have ten in here, ten in here, ten in here. So ten plus ten plus ten. That makes this three tenths equal to thirty hundreds. I can skip count. Ten, twenty, thirty. Thirty hundreds plus eight hundredths equals 38 hundredths, okay? And then to model this, I would have to take this next box, cut it into 10 equal pieces, right? And then shade in eight. So that is how you identify your hundredths place. It's always going to be a decimal. To the left of your decimal, your ones place, your tens place, your hundreds, and it'll keep going, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, just like we learned. And then to the right, it's tenths and then hundreds, okay? So that is all for this lesson. Um, please let me know if you guys have any questions or there's any way that I can help you guys.